All right, let's bring in a key figure who from D.C. who helped make Brexit a reality, our good friend Raheem Kassam. He's a former chief advisor to Brexit backer Nigel Farage and now a co-host of War Room Impeachment with Stephen K. Bannon that you can see here every morning on Newsmax TV. Good to see you, my friend. Great to be on, John. Thank you for having me. So for the American viewers who hear about politics in the UK but don't really understand their electoral process, just give a brief tutorial on what's happening here, what's going to happen tomorrow and what it means to us here in the States. Well, look, we have a similar system in the sense that we have a, a, a bicameral legislature. You have um, the House of Representatives in the Senate and we have the House of Commons and the Lords. Um, we also have, uh, you know, members, uh, i.e. members of Congress. We call them members of Parliament. Um, but the difference comes when you uh, have the members of Parliament effectively deciding from each party who the party leader is going to be and therefore who the prime minister uh, will be, who effectively will run the executive branch of of government from within the parliamentary party. That's obviously you guys uh, elect your president. You go to the polls and put an X in the box of Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton or Andrew Yang or whoever you know it might be. Whereas actually we are given a very finite number of options where it's selected by the party. So the current two figures, you have Boris Johnson, who is very much an establishment, sort of globalist, open borders, classical liberal conservative, sort of more like a Paul Ryan type figure on the political right. right. And then for the uh, Labour Party, you have Jeremy Corbyn, who is a far, far left Hezbollah supporting, uh, IRA supporting, very much a, a hardline socialist. It would be the equivalent of, say, uh, Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez or Bernie Sanders uh, leading the Democrat Party. So these two have been, uh, uh, you know, punching it out uh, on the campaign trail over the last 30 days. And as you say, we're about uh, we're about 15, 16 hours now from Britain's going to the polls and deciding between these these two figures. They don't vote for the Prime Minister, they will vote for their Member of Parliament, but really in everyone's minds when they go into the uh, polling stations tomorrow, are we putting an X next to the box that says Conservative, which means we have a higher likelihood of ending up with Prime Minister Boris Johnson again, or are they going to make the socialist choice and end up with Jeremy Corbyn? Now we have two parties, uh, uh, big parties, just like you do, but we also then have a plethora of smaller parties, the Liberal Democrats, the Scottish National Party, the Brexit Party, right. the Green Party, the Women's Equality Party. And so you have that added variable of a, a, a coalition. And we've had many coalition governments in recent decades. So, you know, this, this is a very interesting election. And if my predictions are anything to go by, I suspect that Boris Johnson will end up with a majority and the Conservative Party will have a majority of between about 30 and 50 seats after tomorrow night. Well, I hope so. Uh, because from what I'm uh, gathering and what I've read about Jeremy Corbyn, this guy makes Neville Chamberlain look like Donald Trump. I mean, this guy is, is far left and he embraces and cozies up to some of the worst players in the world. That's absolutely correct. You know, he's called Hamas, uh, the terrorist entity that runs the Gaza Strip. He's called them friends. Um, he has been a big backer of um, Maduro in Venezuela, was a major backer of Hugo Chavez. Uh, this guy is, you know, the, the worst of the worst as far as we're concerned. However, um, we are not getting a real populist, nationalist, conservative if they go against Jeremy Corbyn. You get, unfortunately, a, quite a liberal, uh, pro-amnesty uh, 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 Boris Johnson. So I don't hope Boris comes out with a great big majority. Right. I hope that, in fact, he gets a very small majority so that the smaller parties in the House of Commons can hold him to account, i.e., let's hope the Brexit party, which is Nigel Farage's party, gets a couple of MPs and therefore Boris has a smaller working majority in the House of Parliament, uh, much like having a very small majority in Congress. It would mean that you can't actually run roughshod over the will of voters just because you've got a parliamentary majority. Yeah, it would be like if we had a President Jeff Flake, but a strong Freedom Caucus, Conservative Caucus in the House and the Senate. Correct. That would be the analogy. Raheem Kassam, always good to see you, my friend. Thanks very much. And you can catch War Room Impeachment every morning here on NewsmaxTV.com. Thanks again, 